Huge ties in the Champions League tonight. Sorry. Thank you. Uh, we won't start there, though. We're actually going to go to Villarreal beating Bayern Munich. They drew in the second leg against Bayern. Pretty incredible. I mean, you've got to say it, Rory. Um, we were talking about it in the stream as well. What a job it is that Emery's done with this Villarreal team. And yeah. then to do that against Bayern Munich, it was the shock of the round. It's the shock of the so round. So far. Yes, I mean, it's, it's definitely the shock of the round. And you're right. I think Unai Emery deserves a lot of respect. I think he is... He is a winner, isn't he, in mm -hmm. Europe. He is clearly, clearly excellent at European competition. Yeah. And when you think about what he, what his reputation in England is partly, and if not generally, if not almost entirely, because of his time at Arsenal, it shows you that he's actually excellent at he, what he does. He was also trashed, I think, in the media because he came into an Arsenal that were fairly in disarray at the time. Yeah. And I think he was blamed for a lot of that because it was fallout from missing Wenger, the trauma of having mm. to move on from a previous manager. And actually, you see what he's very good at. And I like him as a coach because I think what he does is he doesn't go, OK, these guys aren't good enough. We'll just wait till next season. Mm. He goes, I've got an island of what I could term misfit toys, in a yeah. sense. I'm going to make these pieces fit together. I'm going to make the best of it. You're looking at figures like Coquelin, who, are, who are important in this team. And that's not me mocking them. I think these are good players. Yeah. But there are, there are players that at other clubs, they, they don't do fit the enough. profile. Yeah, yeah. And it's the same, you know, with other, like Liverpool have seen it with Benfica in this time. Adel Tarapt is oh, playing man. against them. Yeah, deep there, are players, as well, yeah. there are a lot of players where I think you would have been forgiven if you weren't following football to go... They're not, they, they can't. They he can't. Must have they, they could never play in a tie. Yeah, well, like, you'd be going. They could never going, play in a tie. Where is he now? Yeah. La Liga Two or something. It's a good beat. Do you know the other thing that I think really demonstrates quite how impressive Unai Emery is? If you think about where Arsenal were when he was there, and you think about if you compare them to Chelsea, absolutely, Chelsea were a bit better. So Chelsea were finished above them in the league. I think by two points, Chelsea made top four. Arsenal didn't. Chelsea and Arsenal got to the same uh, European final. Yeah, Chelsea won the final, so Chelsea were a bit better, but they were both in the final. Unai Emery left. Arsenal went nowhere, really. Yes, they beat Chelsea in a cup, but they kind of went nowhere. Didn't get anywhere near Europe last year. No silverware this year. Mm. All of that. Chelsea went and... Well, Chelsea have won the European Cup since then. So it shows you that the clubs were, were fairly similar. Emery leaves. Arsenal deteriorate and Chelsea make a different appointment and accelerate away. Yeah, it's interesting to think of the multiple factors that influence that, but it's certainly interesting to see that Unai Emery didn't really lose any face because of that. I think very much within the manager uh, clique that you have within the industry or the management mm. level, he's still very well regarded. And I get that it's good evening and all these kind of memes of him, but actually... Weirdly, you see... that doesn't help. You know, you know, In what way? That, you know all of those things, like the, the, the meme of the way that he would he would... Set it like bid people a yeah. nice evening and whatever. I think that that kind of buys into the the joke around the character, which oh, I don't absolutely. think is fair. Yeah, I yeah. Think, yeah. I think, I think that's Harry Maguire cool. suffers from that a bit. I don't rate Harry Maguire at all, by the way. But I'm just saying the fact that he's a meme doesn't help. Yeah, it's also Phil Jones. Phil Jones suffered from that. It's also quite weird because obviously there's a lot of things that he probably does to a very proficient level in a game, yeah. but he's, people he's, pick he's, on the he's others. Good evening with the, with a Spanish accent. Yeah, it's hardly it's hardly like. Well, it's, it's also like laughable. It's, it's also quite endearing, but that's yeah. that's part of it. I think is what we're seeing here is a team like Villarreal who go underestimated. I'll admit I don't know enough about them this season. I'm going to be doing mm. plenty of research into them going into the next round of the Champions League when we're doing the live shows. But the point is that they shocked Bayern Munich tonight, and I think it's as much a symptom of Bayern Munich's deterioration as a club and not necessarily being managed properly, and them maybe sitting in some sort of just stasis rather mm. than moving forward. Yeah. And Villarreal being a very decent yeah, side. Uh, do, you know, do you know what, Loz? You're going to have to do the research on this and tell me, but I've got a feeling that you may come back to this, to the sentence that you just said, and actually reevaluate that. Really? Because I don't necessarily think it is the stagnation of Bayern. I don't think it is, because I think they've been quite progressive, appointing uh, uh, Nagelsmann and doing whatever. Maybe, they, yeah. They've been quite progressive. And I think sometimes it isn't that they've stagnated. It's actually that Unai Emery's got it spot on and deserves yeah. credit for no that. no you're right you're right i think i i need to acknowledge yeah, may, that maybe because... maybe it isn't but i think that when you, look i'm i'm the first to admit as well i don't know much about villarreal but i think when you you obviously will soon i think that you will come back and say do you know what they they got it right i know they didn't dominate the game i know they only had a couple of shots on target over the entire time 
But there is it's kind of there the is merit in that. Yeah, 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 exactly. If you, if you get the win and you get through in knockout football, that's kind of the point. That's knockout the point. football is all about that. It's not about yes. like they drew tonight against Bayern Munich. Yeah. But they also got a one nil win, yes. and ultimately and that Chelsea, gets you had, the Chelsea had a dozen really good chances. Yeah, a really good chance and are out. Then but that's the point. Is let's move on to Chelsea. It was a night where it felt like it was that close. Yeah, and the likes of Karen Benzema being your striker made the difference in, in the 180 minutes. Well, the 210 minutes. Yeah. It did. Yeah. I mean, Ka- Karen Benzema's ruthlessness is is going to is going to give them a chance in game in any game. Mm-hmm. Like, I don't think that that Real Madrid... I know. That Real Madrid team aren't as good as Liverpool. That Real Madrid team probably won't beat Liverpool if they're not facing each other. But because of Karen Benzema and a couple of others... But because of Benzema, they can be a fighting chance. Yeah, more, 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 than yeah, that, no, more than that. No, no, Sorry, that's disrespectful. No, I think, way, it's, I think it's. I think you're. No, I think you're fairly. On, I think you're right. You're. You're onto something at least. What they have is, they're Deontay Wilder. They're Deontay Wilder. They're, they're not. Deontay Wilder's not as good a boxer as Tyson Fury. I but when that. you've got that knockout blow, that elite punch, a punch that we've never seen before, a punch that is probably the most devastating punch in the history of boxing. You can you can go with anyone. I guess with that, and that's what they've got. They've got Karen Benzer up front, which is basically Deontay's. It's as if Deontay Wilder had something else in there as well, though, because Modric is in there. He yeah. was fantastic yeah. tonight. I think his class. It must be so well, demoralising. It was that ball over, wasn't it? You know it's that clip ball with the outside of the boot. And then Vinicius Junior is always just in behind, on, in behind, on. in behind. Yeah. So there are some really interesting factors. There's a vulnerable back line there to be attacked. Vulnerable and back Pep Guardiola is going to love that. Vulnerable back line. Is this harsh, vulnerable goalkeeper? I genuinely think, I think Courtois, obviously I think he's a very good goalkeeper, but I think there are deficiencies that you can look to exploit. Yeah. And, you know, there are going to be people who, to, who uh, take exception to that. And but do, do you know what you think about, when you think about what makes Real Madrid good, what, the, what their good points are, like we didn't necessarily see it tonight, but we certainly saw it at Stamford Bridge. Tony Cruz, Luka Modric, Casemiro. Mm-hmm. I don't think that the... I don't, as good as they all are, I don't think that they'll be able to live with that vibrant energy. Rodri, of, uh, of, of, Bernardo Silva. Yeah, yeah. And you know, just that energy of Kevin De Bruyne. Phil, Phil Foden, De Bruyne, Grealish if they want, Mahrez if they want, Sterling if they want. You know, it's just too effervescent. But, then, but yeah, and that was kind of the point with Chelsea is that there was a bit of a loss no, over, the, that, we, over the two ties. Swung. You didn't quite win that midfield battle, but you when you did, you were the better team. Do you know, do you know when you... When you look at the Chelsea midfield, it's almost ideal to, for them to play against. Yeah. Because... To as, say it. Aside from Mason Mount, who's all energy... Like, en- Mason Mount could play in the City team. He's all energy. Like, Jorginho didn't play, but he's passive. Kovacic is great, but he's quite passive. There is there is a, a calmness to Chelsea, which is also good, like, in certain games. But Luka Modric and Tony Cruz would rather play against... Co- Jorginho or Kovacic mm-hmm. or, or the passive players rather than uh, De Bruyne Foden Grealish Sterling like you've got, you haven't got a minute mm-hmm. you know I think Chelsea should have actually gone as as high energy mm. as, as possible and, mm. and you know I think over the two ties we certainly created enough the reason that Chelsea haven't gone through is because we didn't finish well enough I agree with that that's what it is that ultimately if you want to if you want to somebody will do this I'm sure on the internet there'll be a compilation made of the chances that Chelsea missed and I guarantee you that Chelsea missed chances harder than all of the goals Real Madrid, uh, sorry, easier than all of the goals Real Madrid scored, apart from maybe the Benzema third at Stamford Bridge. Agreed. Because even I scored that. It's frustrating though, isn't it? Because that was that was a tie that was meant to go down in history. And I think it probably will, but it'll be the nearly yeah, it'll rather go down than for the, the wrong reasons. Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah. It'll and, go down for the wrong reasons. And there, there were good goals in there. It will probably buoy Chelsea or give them some bit between their teeth. There's probably an FA Cup in that Chelsea team now. Do you know what? I'm really happy that I, I've... This could be famous last words here, but I, I kind of feel like top four is in the bag. I know, I agree. I think top four is in the bag. Especially considering everyone else is stuttering yeah. and giving points away. I, that's, not, that's not because... I'm not saying that top three is in the bag. I think that something could happen there. Chelsea could go to pot. and I just can't see Tottenham and Arsenal kicking Chelsea out of the top four. I agree. But I'm really happy that that is secured because I think that this defeat could actually be fairly troubling. Mm-hmm. I think it could be one of those defeats that lingers, effectively makes us feel like the season is over, when, when it isn't. Like, the FA Cup would be a massive win. I'd love to win I the think, FA Cup. I'd love to knock Palace out. I think but, this this is also one of those things where 
because you're out of this, it's so difficult. You know, I, the only way I can describe it is, you know, towards the end of a relationship when there is still that hope that, well, maybe we could still make mm. it work sort of thing. And then when the breakup actually happens, you go, I love oh, <laughs> I love you, but oh, thank God I can get away from you. Yeah. Lukaku's going to have that. Um, like there's going to be a yeah. number of, there are going to be a number of changes. I mean, that, that feeling is completely it, mutual. That's going to, yeah, but yeah. that is going to happen with two big things now. Roman Brambridge will leave mm. and whether you want him to or not, whether you're a Chelsea mm. fan who wants Roman oh, out or not, the point is yeah. it's, an, it's a relationship which will end soon. Yeah. My point is not, do you want him out or yeah, not? Yeah. The point is sometimes relationships have to end for yeah. uh, pragmatism. Well, yeah. Right, yeah. right? Lukaku yeah. and possibly one or two more senior players. Yeah, Jorginho, or, or, yeah, example, yeah exactly, yeah. right? When they end and you go into the new phase for Chelsea, I think there'll be an element of relief around this club. And I also think there'll be relief because I think Thomas Tuchel doesn't like those kind of influences within the side. Yeah. And he's done so well to stay through, even to get to this point, he's done very well. But we give him that credit and then we move on and go, what do you do next? And you've got to push on from this point because there are so many opportunities. You dodged a bullet, essentially, in knowing that you don't have to stick with the car. Essentially, him forcing his way out of the club is actually you dodging a bullet at this point. Because mm. what you've worked out is this guy doesn't want to be here. He doesn't want to play for the club. And he's, and and he's not got the motivation yeah. that we need for any striker. Put your eggs in the habits basket. Yeah. Put your eggs in other people's basket. The same with Jorginho. Move him on. And the same with your ownership. Good memories. Time to move on. And that happens after you have this kind of cataclysm of we're out of the Champions League. We're not competing in the Premier League, but we've got top four. We can, we can, we know next season we can attract players. We've got the Champions League. There's so many positives for Chelsea moving forward. I think it might be seen as negative, a bit of a damp squib at the end of the season. Mm. But with everything that's going on at the club, I think there's a lot that Chelsea fans can look forward to. I agree. I agree. I think it's going to be. A, I think it's going to be a hard summer, but I'm already optimistic about the new season and, and the new yeah. rate and the new. The new regime. It depends on how quickly yeah. it gets turned over. I'll be interested to see whether there is actually a reason why it's almost like you guys need to get to the end of the season and they're almost waiting for the breath of the summer. Like, mm. season's over. We're the new ownership yeah. sort of thing. Like, instead of coming in, ending on a bad note of this season with them, that being a way of them taking over. Yeah, yeah. I think there's a bit of a PR game going on here. So I'll be interested to see what happens. Ultimately, you're out of the Champions League. Yeah. You're unlucky, but you let yourself down in the first leg. And it's easy to forget that first leg. Agreed. I know. It's a, yeah. it's a, it's a, it's a real shame because if you score three legitimate and one controversial goal in the Bernabeu, you shouldn't be you shouldn't be out. Completely agree. I do see, though, in a few seasons' time, this is a BT Sport featurette with Mason Mount sitting down and going, yeah, it was an all-time low for me, yeah. but thank God we're in the final yeah, now. Yeah, yeah. It's that sort of thing. I agree. Uh, thanks a lot for watching, guys. Sorry, I went a little bit long there. Uh, thanks a lot to Rory for being on the channel. We've thank done a great you. review of uh, the actual game over on his channel. He's much better at doing that sort of thing than I am. I talk way too much about concepts. And uh, I will see you guys tomorrow for the reaction to whatever the result is in the Liverpool game. And then there is another big video coming out this week. Uh, don't forget to be subscribed for that for Thursday. Uh, looking forward to seeing you guys. See you later. Bye. Cheers.